Hi, everyone. Uh, Grim Tripathi, uh, good morning. Um, so let me get myself set up here. So today I'll be talking to you about um, optimizing quality of screening colonoscopy. Uh, we've heard really, very elegantly from Dr. Isaka and Dr. Nordstrom about the screening um, uh, kind of uh, efforts um, and getting people in for screening. But once they're kind of um, at the level of getting a colonoscopy, um, it's actually been shown to be very helpful. Colonoscopy, uh, there are many kind of different modalities um, in actually um, getting screening done, including fit testing, but colonoscopy um, is the most commonly used one in the United States at this point. So, you know, we've had made big efforts in reduction in mortality um, and late stage colon cancers, but it, it's not a perfect tool. Otherwise, these would be at 100%. So there's ways that we can kind of make changes and quality improvements here. Um, to help decrease um, colon cancer even more with colonoscopy. So, so the biggest thing that comes up is interval cancers. Um, they exist. So even people who are in the system getting colonoscopy. Um, Dr. Lathie, I'm really sorry to interrupt. We, we cannot see your slides right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Don't mind the, the technical snafus there. So um, I'll just kind of go from where we started. So as you know, so colon cancer, cancer screening has been very much helped by colonoscopy and decreasing mortality, but it's not 100%. And it's not perfect, so there's you know definitely changes that we can make um, here to kind of optimize it even more. Um, the, the biggest thing to kind of think about is interval cancers exist. So this, so this is for people who are actually having colonoscopy at scheduled intervals, but it, even between their post Post colonoscopy and then their scheduled surveillance screening, um, there still, you know, there still are cancers that are found. Um, pretty high, actually, considering um, how, how good we think we do in colonoscopy. So seven to nine percent actually has been found, and more likely in the uh, proximal colon, so on the right side of the colon. Um, there have been um, studies showing that when gastroenterologists are the ones performing these colonoscopies, you know, we tend to do a, a pretty good job at finding um, uh, polyps and finding um, decreasing colorectal cancer. So um, kind of as a group, we have, um, we can make even further efforts to kind of decrease since we're, you know, really bearing the burden of uh, the colonoscopy screening. So, so why do interval cancers exist? So um, most of them really are 50 to 75% from missed polyps or incompletely resected polyps. Um, so these are things that are kind of operator dependent and things that we can kind of make headway on. The AHG actually back in 2014, 2015 had put out this really nice kind of uh, paper about quality indicators for colonoscopy. It's a very comprehensive list. I won't go through all the details here, but you can certainly pull it up. It's a very nice table that kind of tells us kind of what we should be aiming for in general for um, quality measures for colonoscopy. It includes things like um, doing colonoscopy for proper indications, um, having proper informed consent, managing antithrombotics, and then talking a lot about the technical aspects of procedures such as sequel intubation rate, um, withdrawal time, kind of documentation and documentation of um, the uh, preparation uh, quality, and then post procedure, such as having less than one in a thousand kind of perforation rest, less than one percent um, post polypectomy bleeding. I'm going to focus more on the polyp detection and the interprocedural aspects of uh, that uh, ASG kind of quality indicators in the talk going forward here. So, so the biggest one to kind of focus on is the adenoma detection rate. Um, the ADR is, is uh, defined as a proportion of screening colonoscopies that detect at least one adenoma. Um, so this is really considered the single most important quality measure in colonoscopy. Um, and it really is a primary measure of mucosal inspection of the colon. So the current um, ADR performance targets are basically over 25% um, adenoma detection rate overall. Um, broken down um, between males and females, so greater than 30% for males and 20% for females. So if you tend to have a very heavy male population, such as you know um, physicians who work at the VA, probably will see more males. Uh, it should be closer to greater than 30%. Or for um, people who have more females, for example, female endoscopists who do, do a lot more female um, patients uh, should be over 20%. So ADR, the seminal paper um, by uh, Corley kind of showed that ADR and interval cancers, the risk increases um, as um, the ADRs are lower. So the highest ADR is associated with the lowest interval cancer rates. And just a 1% increase in the ADR is really associated with a 3 to 3% to 6% reduction interval cancer rate. Uh, so big changes can be made if we're able to kind of um, 
increase their, our ADRs. Um, what I like about this paper a lot is that it shows kind of the, the range of ADRs. So there's people down in the 7% range up into the 52% range. So, uh, you know, a 25% kind of goal uh, seems very attainable when we're, when we're looking at um, kind of the breadth of uh, kind of ADRs, but it tells us that there's um, people with, with the very kind of wide spectrum kind of out there practicing. And the increase in ADR actually um, reduces interval cancers, um, as I mentioned. I like this paper by Kaminsky just because it showed that, um, you know, we are teachable um, as a group. So um, these um, gastroenterologists received um, colonoscopy quality feedback. So they were told about their ADRs and told how they were doing on quality metrics. And there was actually a 75% improvement in ADR. So um, just getting a little bit of feedback kind of internally motivates us a lot to, uh, to kind of make changes. Um, and, and this also, again, with the, with the goal of increasing our ADR, um, kind of repeatedly has shown it decreases our interval cancer rates pretty dramatically um, when we get over the 25% mark. So from 25.3 cases per 100,000 patients, even down to 7.1. So ADR report carding, so like, or like feedback, um, I think is kind of a, a pretty important kind of step for uh, most health systems or providers to kind of have. Um, they, like I said, give, give us that internal motivation. There's no shaming or anything that needs to happen. We don't have to kind of call out all our colleagues and, and put them up against each other. Just to know against the general mean or de-identified data of how you're doing in the general spectrum. Um, a lot of that internal motivation, I think, is very helpful. Um, the couple of hiccups there is that you need to have manual entry of pathology. Um, so, you know, there is some extra legwork that has to be done um, kind of on the backside. Um, we can certainly game it can certainly be gamed if you wanted to try to get a better score. Um, so you only need one adenoma. If there's a, a, a colon full of polyps um, and you're only taking out one, you could, that ADR is the same as if you took out all 11 of those polyps. Um, and then in an a ideal ADR report card, I think there should be other quality metrics noted as well. Um, but it might be harder to kind of um, ascertain them without, again, some men more kind of go through going through the report. Um, but here's where the endoscopic writer technological functionality may be really helpful. If you're able to produce data sets, if you have more of a click button reporting versus manual, um, there may be more kind of feasibility in making this a more seamless process, especially in a large health system. Um, the alternative would be something like the polyp detection rate. Um, which is um, essentially uh, not needing pathology. It's a surrogate marker, which correlates with the ADR, but it hasn't at all been studied yet in prospectively in quality improvement. We can't make those same statements that increasing polyp detection rate, you know, um, decrease interval cancer. Um, again, we can kind of game almost anything, um, uh, you know, if, if we wanted to. So this one also can be gamed. If you take out a bunch of rectal hyperplastic polyps, you could certainly still get a, a good looking polyp detection rate without much of a clinical, clinically significant um, kind of meaningful measure. So a um, couple other kind of uh, things to kind of focus on. One would be the quality of the bowel prep. Um, you know, ideally we, um, our goal should be greater than 98%. Um, historically, we've done a lot of like excellent, good, fair, poor, unsatisfactory. Um, I find these terms to be really subjective. Um, I tend to really like the Boston Bowel Prep score, which is a nice validated score. Um, looks at um, basically um, uh, segmentally um, your bowel prep. So zero, one, two, and three, you can kind of see there. Zero is essentially your unprepped colon. Three is your perfectly um, prepped colon with no debris. And it's uh, been shown to be validated for adequate detection for polyps greater than five millimeters. If your Boston bowel prep scores two to three segmentally, um, or I, I like to use a total of, of greater than six total. So if you're finding a score less than six, you can kind of consider that you, maybe you need to bring this person in sooner. It wouldn't be kind of adequate for um, kind of complete screening, but over um, six, it, it would be considered a, a good kind of quality um, colonoscopy uh, for initial screen. And then split prep really should become kind of, I think, standard of care at this point. Um, adequate bowel prep is important. Um, split prep has been shown on meta-analysis and then in subsequent studies just to even um, increase ADR. Um, and, and increase the uh, bowel preparation. Uh, withdrawal time is something that's, that's very important. Um, kind of the big seminal paper kind of showed us that um, great, greater than six minutes is, is kind of our um, 
minimum time um, for um, withdrawal. Um, and really because we're using withdrawal time as a surrogate for how good of a job you're doing inspecting the colon. So, and that's without polypectomy. Um, but, you know, subsequent studies have shown the effective kind of withdrawal time might really need to be more on the eight to 10 mark, um, especially if we're finding kind of um, more sets ulcerated polyps, flat lesions, kind of harder to find. Uh, they really need kind of closer inspection. And in fact, we're increasing withdrawal time to nine to 10 minutes is actually increased um, detection for uh, sets ulcerated polyps up to 30%. Um, and then uh, I like the study with the New Hampshire colonoscopy registry showed the kind of six minute withdrawal time, the ADRs were about 23% uh, versus nine minute withdrawal time went up all the way to 33%. So you're increasing quite a bit if you're just spending a few extra minutes to really kind of look. So along with the, um, time, the um, technique's really important as well. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a matter of kind of looking closely and, and looking um, and doing kind of effective um, uh, basically um, withdrawal, so looking behind all the folds, cleaning the pools, doing adequate dist distension um, is important. And then there's, uh, the other big thing I would kind of mention is just making sure you're doing a double right colon examination. Um, so we've kind of seen kind of um, throughout the talks here that the right side um, interval cancers and the right side kind of um, uh, polyp detection, uh, it seems to be where we're kind of missing things. So looking really really close to the right side is important. Um, and then a couple quick notes, I'd say high definition um, really does help. So, you know, in having um, scopes that are high definition is helpful. NBI, not generally too effective. Um, just, just a quick kind of mention um, about um, artificial intelligence, something that's near and dear to my heart. So uh, we did some work on kind of the initial, one of the uh, initial algorithms that was validated to show greater than 96% accuracy in polyp detection. Um, and now there's even, the newest has come out the um, randomized control trial showing a real improvement in ADR with um, kind of artificial intelligence. And I think this is really kind of the future. Um, and then the polyp resection kind of techniques, um, we, we can kind of talk about this a little bit more and kind of the, uh, question answer session, but my, my big kind of um, uh, kind of advice with this is, um, it, you know, incomplete polyp resection, I think is one of the things that can lead to interval cancer. So, you know, making sure we do kind of good polypectomy is important. So using cold snare when you can over cold forceps um, is really kind of the take home point I'd, I'd like to make. So cold snare for all polyps greater than three millimeters is essentially um, kind of my general rule of thumb. And I use jumbo forceps for anything three millimeters or less. Um, and the last thing I'll kind of uh, leave here is that um, I, I like this paper because it make this, made this kind of um, kind of note that ADR is, is, is one kind of metric that we look up, but it's not everything. Endoscopists who are highly skilled at detecting polyps are not necessarily highly skilled at removing them. So there is obviously the technique portion that comes along with kind of finding the polyps. So I think um, having competency is, is important. And if you're not feeling comfortable or you know things are technically difficult, uh, there's no shame in kind of, I think it's uh, very commendable to refer to another endoscopist uh, before sending someone to surgery um, uh, to make sure that that polyp gets removed. So just kind of in general, we, we kind of talked about kind of major kind of things to optimize. Um, I think um, questions can come up about, you know, whether there should be some kind of polypecty technique assessment. There's, there are places uh, such as the UK where they do kind of have certification and um, for polypectomy technique for snaring before they're allowed to kind of go on and do colonoscopy. But um, these are all kind of things, future things to look at. Um, I think ADR report carding is, is really important. And I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with ADR uh, now that we're starting to do colonoscopies on um, younger patients, uh, as I mentioned with, with the 45 year old screening, we might be finding you know less adenomas. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how that, that kind of comes in the future. Um, and I think it'll be nice to see how AI is integrated into our um, future practice. So thank, thank you very much. I appreciate all your time. Um, and, I'm not, and I'll uh, hand it back to uh, Dr. Folomay. I'd like to thank uh, everyone for their attention.